This lesson deals with Bodhi plot forms. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 6. As I mentioned in the last video, there are eight simple forms that can characterize any transfer function. Let's look at some of these. First one I'll call form 1, called an F1 of j omega, and that would be the simplest possible case, and it's just a constant. So the magnitude of that is 20 log of the magnitude of that number, and we're just going to sketch that versus frequency, but it's not going to change with frequency, just a constant. If this constant were positive, then the phase angle would be 0, and that would just be 0 degrees versus frequency, again, not changing with frequency. And then the other case would be having a minus sign in front of this. It doesn't show up in the magnitude, but just the angle. It would be a plus 180 or a minus 180. If it was a plus 180, just would draw a constant for all frequencies, a value of 180, or minus 180. But not both, just one or the other. Now, why would you pick one over the other? Well, when we add up all the phase angles, I'm going to try to stay between plus and minus 180 degrees, if at all possible. Then you can think about in lab as you see a phase shift moving to the left or to the right of the reference signal. Peace Place also tries to do this in plotting the angle versus frequency. In general, we're going to be looking at very large changes in frequency, and one way to put that on a graph is to use a log scale. There's two types we're going to use in the course. One is a decade scale, and what that means is that each unit is a factor of 10. So we're going, say, from 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, and so on up. Going the other way, we're getting smaller. This would be 1 10th, the next one would be 1 100th, one and so on. I'll label the axis omega, but really when you're using this type of scale, it's really the log base 10 of omega. In other words, one unit would be the power. So 0 to 1, 2, 3, and 4. In audio, sometimes we work in octaves. Usually that's how we describe a person's voice. Our axis could also be multiples of the power of 2. In other words, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, each time doubling the frequency. Here we're going up in factors of 10. If you take the log base 2 of this axis, then you're going to get 1 unit, 2 units, 3 units, and 4 units. It's essentially a linear scale, but based on a logarithmic change in value. And so as we describe things in the course, well, I'll label the x-axis as just omega, but whether it's decade paper or octave paper, we will be using uh, log base 10 and log base 2. For our next form, let's let f equal j omega. So the magnitude of f2 and db is 20 log of the square root of the real part squared, which is 0, plus the imaginary part squared, which is just omega. That turned out to be 20 log base 10 of just omega. What does that look like? Well, let's take some data points. Let's let omega equal 1, 2, 10, and a tenth. 20 log base 10 of 1 is 0. 20 log base 10 of 10 is 1 times 20 is 20. And then point 0.1 is 10 to the minus 1. So you could bring the minus 1 out in front. So you'd have minus 20 log base 10 of omega. That's minus 20 times 1. Let omega equal 2. This turned out to be 6.02 dB. Now I sketched these points, but you can see the little dots I've got. And they actually fall in a straight line. You can see here, for change of one decade, we change by 20 dB. So the slope is 20 dB per decade. Here I had a one octave change, and the slope would be just that, a change of 6.02 dB in one octave. Now let's see if we can drive this mathematically. The slope is the rise over the run, so we take the derivative of our function f2, with respect to the x-axis, which is log base 10 of omega. So the derivative of our function would be 20 log base 10 of omega, bring out the 20, and you'd have d log base 10 of omega with respect to d log base 10 of omega, in other words, dx dx. Those cancel, and just get 20. Our y-axis is db, and our x-axis is decades, so 20 db per decade. Now, if you're working in octaves, we would need to convert this into log base 2 of omega. I looked it up in a math handbook, and this turns out to be 20 times the log base 10 of 2, times the log base 2 of omega. Our x-axis would be octave paper, so it would be log base 2 of omega. We can pull out this constant, which is 20 log base 10 of 2, and again we have dx dx. 20 log base 10 of 2 is 6.02, y-axis is db, x-axis is octaves. Put the phase angle. We just have j omega, so we take the arctangent of the imaginary part over the real part, real part's 0, that's the arctangent of infinity, and that's just 90 degrees. So the graph of that would just be 90 degrees versus frequency. Well, so for my next form, I pick that f3 is equal to 1 over j omega. The magnitude of f3 and db, we could write symbolically as 20 log, the magnitude of f3, but f3 is the reciprocal of f2, so you could write that as the magnitude raised to the minus 1 power. Bring that minus 1 over here, and you get minus 20 log base 10 of the magnitude of f2, which we found to be just omega. So our result then is minus 20 log base 10 of omega. We just take the last result and simply change the sign of every term. In sketching our graph, we were passing through 1 radian per second before, and then we were increasing at 20 dB per decade, now we're decreasing. This is really just a mirror image of the graph above. The angle is a similar thing. The angle of the numerator is 0, the angle of the denominator is the angle of F2. We get minus 90 degrees. 
This too is a mirror image around zero degrees from a plus 90 to a minus 90. Form one was unique, form two is unique, but form three is a variation of form two. So there's really only two new things here and one that's a function of it. But whenever we have a reciprocal of one of our forms, we just simply take the mirror image for the magnitude and the angle and we can just sketch that by inspection. Form one was purely real, forms two and three were purely imaginary. The next most complicated thing, we'd have a real and an imaginary term. Our imaginary term will always have an omega in it because of the j omega l and the j omega c. Let's also take that real part and let's just make it equal to one. In other words, if there's a number here, say it's a constant, I want to pull it out in front and I'm going to divide this term by that constant. Let's call that constant omega c. So the magnitude of f4 would be 20 log square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. What does that look like? Well, let's put some data points together and see if we can graph it. Has a ratio of omega to omega c, so let's pick omega to be multiples of omega c. Suppose initially that omega equal omega c. Then I would have 1 plus 1 squared, 20 log base 10 of the square root of 2, turned out to be 3.01 dB. And I've marked that as a red dot on this dotted line. If omega were 10 times omega c, then this ratio would be 10 squared plus 1. The square root of that, log base 10, times 20 is 20.04 dB. If this were a ratio of 100, you'd have 100 squared plus 1 square root, log base 10 of that times 20 is 40.0004. What's happening is that the one is becoming negligible. In other words, if you could ignore this one, then the square root and the square root cancel. And so if this ratio were 10, I'd have 20 log base 10 of 10, which would be 20 dB. Likewise, if this was a ratio of 100, I'd have 20 log base 10 of 100, which is 40 dB. But I could approximate all the data points that are here as a asymptote with a slope of 20 dB per decade or 6 dB per octave. Let's go the other way. Let's go smaller than omega c. So if omega equaled one tenth omega c, you'd have one tenth squared plus one square root log base 10 of that times 20, and that's 0 0.043 dB. If you made this ratio equal to one one hundredth, you'd be squaring that plus one square root log base 10 times 20, that's 0 0.0004 dB. Like before, one of the terms is becoming negligible. In this case, it's this term getting smaller and smaller. The square root of 1 is 1. Well, we'd be taking 20 log base 10 of 1, so we are approaching 0 dB. And you could approximate all of these data points with just a straight line with a slope of 0 dB per decade. And the actual curve I've shown here as a dotted line is approaching this asymptote at low frequencies and this asymptote at high frequencies with respect to the frequency omega c. So you could approximate this equation with just two straight line segments that intersect at omega c having a slope of 20 dB per decade and 0 dB per decade. So an infinite number of points just approximated with two straight lines. What's the worst case error between the asymptotic approximations and the actual curve? If you look here, it's kind of obvious. Right here at omega c, where we have a sharp corner and a smooth curve. And the error is 3.01 dB at that point. What about the angle? The angle is the arctangent of the imaginary term divided by the real term. So that would be the arctangent of omega over omega c. So again, let's take some data points and see what we get. If omega equal omega c, we take in the arc tangent of 1, which is 45 degrees. And I've marked that right over here. I'll make it with a red dot again as the actual curve. And then if we let omega equal 10 omega c, we're taking the arc tangent of 10, which is 84.29 degrees. If this ratio were 100, it would be 89.4. What's happening is the arc tangent of infinity is 90 degrees. And so we're approaching 90 degrees. So we could then, one decade above omega c, approximate the data as 90 degrees. Going the other way, going smaller in frequency, the arctangent of a tenth is 5.71, and the arctangent of 1 one-hundredth is 0.572 degrees. For the decade below omega c, we're approaching zero degrees because the arctangent of a small number is zero. So we could use three straight line segments to approximate the actual curve. I've drawn the actual curve just approximately as a dotted line. At omega equals omega c, we're at 45 degrees. Go back one decade, and we're at zero. Go forward one decade, we're at 90. So we're changing at a rate of 45 degrees per decade. What's the worst case error between the asymptotic approximation and the smooth curve? It's again at these sharp corners at 0.1 omega c and 10 omega c, and the error is 5.71 degrees in both cases. The infinite number of points, we're able to approximate these with three straight line segments. Just like before, knowing what omega c is, I can then sketch an approximate curve for the phase angle. Let's define form 5 as the reciprocal of form 4. So I'm going to take the mirror image of it. So instead of going up at 20 dB per decade, we're going to go down at 20 dB per decade. The actual curve is going to approach this. The maximum error actually is right at omega c. It's an error of 3.01 dB. The angle, same thing. We're going to have this come down to minus 45 degrees, and then we're going to drop to minus 90 in another decade and go back to zero. The actual curve will pass through 45 degrees. First errors are right here at one-tenth and a 
10 omega c, and it's an error of 5.71 degrees. So the actual curve and the asymptotes are not identical, but they're very close to each other, and we can get a real quick approximation as to what's going on with frequency. Lastly, let's define form 6 as 1 minus j omega over omega c. The magnitude of this then would be the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, square root, 20 times log base 10 of that number. But this, when you square this, is the same as form 4. So this isn't new in terms of the magnitude behavior. The angle is the arc tangent of the imaginary over the real, which is a minus omega over omega c divided by 1. But the tangent function is an odd function, and that the minus sign can come out in front. But this is the form that we had in form 5. Form 1 is unique, form 2 is unique, 3 is a variation, 4 is unique, 5 is a variation, and 6 here is also a variation. Now there is no form 7 that's a reciprocal of this because this corresponds to a pole in the right half plane. So I can have a zero in the right half plane, but I can't have a pole and have a stable circuit. In other words, a transient response doesn't die out. The first six forms deal with a constant or real roots. We'll talk about the remaining two forms a little bit later in the chapter. And these are some of the basic forms of sketching a Bode plot.